Hey everybody, welcome to The Mountain Gamer. This is my huge Christmas tree, which means it's December, which means it's time to do a top 10 list. So, I'm gonna do a top 10 list. Let's go to camera B right now. And nobody's manning camera B. All right, whatever, let's do it. Top 10. So, my top 10 list. When I was doing this list, at first I thought, I'm gonna go on BGG, because uh, I log all my plays, because I'm a nerd. <laughs> And I thought, I'm gonna, you know, rank them from most played. But it uh, turns out that the way this thing showed up, um, it, didn't, it wasn't representative of my top 10. Like, for example, my, num my sixth most played game was Codenames. And I do like Codenames, but it's not, it's not on this top 10 list. You know what I mean? Like, I like it, but I don't love it, and it doesn't make me happy every time I play it, all right? So this particular top 10, it's a list of games that I love. They might not see the table as much as I would like, but they always make me happy. I always have a good time, an amazing time playing them, so that's why they are on this list. Before we get going, I just want to mention that there are no party games on this list. Okay. I just thought I'd go strictly card game, board game, but if I had to pick my favorite party game, it would probably be Time's Up or Monikers. It's just, it's always a blast. So anyway, enough about, about me uh, talking here, so let's get into it. My top 10 list, here we go. Number 10. Star Realms. Star Realms is a competitive deck building game for two players where both of you will be playing ship cards from your hand to either recruit new ships or attack your opponent in an effort to get them down to zero authority. For me, Star Realms is the definitive two player filler game. Most of the plays I've had with this were with my wife while supper was heating up in the oven. It's quick, it's easy, and it's not as random as some people would have you think, especially if you play with the strategic setup variant, and you can find a video about that on my channel. What's best about this game is that things ramp up really fast. In your first few turns, you're dealing out combat values of one or two, but by the fifth round, you could easily be dishing out 25 damage in a single blow. And if you're smart about the way you recruit your ships, you can pull off some crazy combos. Star Realms is not a game that I often request we bring to the table, but anytime somebody asks me if I want to play, I will always say yes. Number 9. Arctic Scavengers. Arctic Scavengers is a competitive deck building game set in a post-apocalyptic frozen wasteland where 1 to 5 players will fight it out in order to gather weapons, tools, meds, and sometimes junk, all in an effort to recruit new mercenaries into their ranks. Arctic Scavengers takes the basic Dominion style of deck building and makes it, well, interactive. And that's what I love about it. Very early in the game, after you're done digging in the junk pile and hiring new mercenaries, a skirmish takes place between the players, and whoever wins it gets to take a special face-down card called a contested resource and add it into their deck. But here's the thing, only one player can peek at that card at the start of the round. And that's where the game really shines, because if you haven't peeked at the contested resource, you're never quite sure how many points it's worth. It's pretty cool. Arctic Scavengers is by no means deep or complex, but there is this beautifully simple element of bluffing and deduction going on throughout the game, and that's why I keep coming back to it. In fact, I like it so much, I actually created a way to play the game solo, as well as an expansion that lets you play fully cooperatively. And you can check out videos about that on my channel. Number 8. Legendary Encounters Alien. Legendary Encounters Alien is a cooperative deck building game for 1 to 5 players set in the Alien movie franchise. Do you remember that scene in Aliens where they set up automated guns in a hallway and the aliens just keep coming and coming and coming? Well, that scene, that's the game. But instead of guns, it's you and your friends. That's how the game makes me feel and I love it. What I also love about the game is that it actively encourages cooperation. The game achieves this with what they call coordinate cards, which players can offer out of turn to the main player. This keeps everybody engaged all the time and it makes the game truly cooperative. I'm also a huge sucker for the alien theme, so the game definitely has that going for it. I actually like the game so much I created two full expansions and I'll probably do a video about that in the future. Finally, be aware that the game can be very swingy and sometimes brutal, but there are ways around that. Just, again, check out my channel, I made a few videos about that. 
Number seven, Star Trek Fleet Captains. Star Trek Fleet Captains is a game for two to four players where one side will play as the Federation, exploring space, trying to fulfill scientific missions, and the other side will play as the Klingons, basically doing everything the same as the Federation, but also trying to blow them away from the Quadrant. This game, as Tom Vassell once put it, is Star Trek in a box. As for me, I would even say that if you're not a fan of the IP, you probably shouldn't buy this game. For one, the rulebook is a mess. And secondly, the components are, for the most part, pretty shabby. The cards are thin, so are the hexes that make up the board, and the plastic Heroclix ships, although visually nice, are virtually impossible to handle. I myself have broken one just trying to set the damn thing to yellow alert. All that being said, there is a fun game in here, where every action you take must be maximized in order for you to win. And the two factions really do play differently. It's very thematic, and it fits in 100% with the IP. These days, I'm playing Star Trek Fleet Captains either in solo or co-op mode, thanks to a great variant that I found on BGG and later tweaked, and you can find a video about that on my channel. Finally, and I am repeating myself here, if you are a fan of the IP, this thing will scratch your Star Trek itch. I guarantee it. I mean, just imagine, you can play with the USS Prometheus, with James T. Kirk as your captain, and Worf as his first mate. I mean, what else do you want here? <laughs> Number 6. Clank in Space Clank in Space is a competitive deck-building game where you and up to three other players will race through a spaceship to try and steal an artifact and get back to the escape pods before anybody else. You probably guessed by now that I'm a huge fan of deck builders, but what sets Clank apart for me is that you're actually using the deck building mechanism to not only buy new cards, but also to physically move a meeple on a game board. I also like the way the game starts off really chill, with you and your adversaries strolling through the ship, buying shiny things, only for one of you to suddenly realize, uh, holy crap, Caroline is already at the other end of the ship. I gotta get my butt in gear. For me, Clank in Space is a racing game on top of anything else, and when you get to those last few rounds, things can get pretty stressful. Finally, the thing that brings it all home for me is the tongue-in-cheek sci-fi theme. It's full of references to classic movies and TV shows. I mean, you name it, Star Wars, Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, Doctor Who, Aliens, it's all there. And my very favorite card, the Cranky Doctor. He's a doctor and nothing else. Number five, Rex, Final Days of an Empire. Rex, Final Days of an Empire is an asymmetrical dudes on a map game in which three to six players will deploy troops and move them across a city under bombardment in order to collect money, pick fights with enemies, and control strategic strongholds. And if you did not already know, this game is essentially Dune without the Dune theme. At the heart of the game, you've got six alien races from which players choose from, and they are incredibly asymmetrical. Take the Emirates of Hassan, for example. These guys get paid whenever someone deploys ships onto the board, which is something players will do every turn. Then you've got the Excha Kingdom. These little turtle guys have a special win condition that says they can actually bet on when and by whom the game will be won. And if their prediction turns out to be right, they steal the win. All of these alien races seem either ridiculously overpowered or underpowered, but in reality, it's a well-balanced ecosystem, and key to winning the game is figuring out how your alien race fits into all of it. And the combat in this game? It is brutal. You see, in a fight, you always lose the amount of troops you commit to it, even if you win the fight. So this makes for a very interesting dilemma. I want to win this combat, so I need to put in a lot of troops. But I know I'm gonna lose those troops, which leaves me with only a tiny bit left on this area, which in turn makes me an easy target for another player later on. Ugh, it's amazing. Finally, I love that every time we get to those last two rounds, people are standing around the table. It's so tense. Everyone stares at the map wondering how the hell they're gonna manage to squeeze in a win. And even if they do win, Everybody knows that treachery is always around the corner, and that victory can always be taken right from under you. Rex Final Days of an Empire is an amazing game, and I wish I got to play it more often. And if I did, it would probably be higher on this list. Number 4. Fury of Dracula 
Fury of Dracula is a hidden movement, one versus all game, where one of you will play as Dracula, moving around a map of Europe in secret, while up to four other players will hunt you down to destroy you. That is, if they manage to find you in time. Firstly, I have to mention that I always play as Dracula, and in that regard, what I love about the game is that it is a tense experience for me. Because while Dracula's name might be on the box, be aware that he's not that strong. In this game, you really have to keep low, hide, and bide your time, because if the hunters find you too quickly and get the jump on you, especially as a group, it's pretty much game over. So you really have to sneak around and keep your best poker face on. What I also love is that one of the main aspects of the game, for me at least, is that I have to listen to what the hunter players are saying, and then use that to plan out my movements across the map. It's really a case where information is the ultimate weapon. And not only is this information useful, it can also be a great source of stress as I hear the hunters discuss their next move, unknowing that they're gonna end up on the space right next to me, literally breathing down my neck. It's a truly unnerving feeling, and no other game makes me feel this way. And that's why I love it. Number three, Runebound, third edition. Runebound is a fantasy adventure board game where you and up to three other players will venture across the land of Terranoth taking on quests and fighting monsters, all in an effort to level up your hero and prepare for an epic fight against a terrible villain. Runebound is an open sandbox. The game gives you three actions per round and really just lets you go. But when the big bad guy shows up at the end, you better be ready. What I love about Runebound is deciding how I get to level up my hero, which is basically the game. Am I going to focus on learning skills, or am I going to try and purchase the most powerful weapons I can find? Or both? And seriously, the variety of ways with which I can level up are virtually endless, and it's all entirely up to me. There's a lot to love in this game. I love the adventures, the quests, the flavor text. Yes, almost everything in the game is some sort of a cliche, but in a good way. Oh, and when you fight in this game, it's not by rolling dice. It's by casting tokens. And it's just awesome. It's such a satisfying feeling, and it's one of those quirks of the game that makes it special for me. I should mention that even though Runebound is billed as a competitive game, I exclusively play it co-op. Now you can do this with the Unbreakable Bonds expansion, but even without it, it's an easy fix and you can really just play it co-op. Finally, be aware that even if the game can still be purchased in stores, Fantasy Flight seems to have pretty much given up on it, with most of the expansions being out of stock everywhere you look. But that doesn't mean that the fans have given up. You can find a lot of variants for the game on BGG and even a few homemade expansions. I myself have made two of them. Runebound 3rd Edition is a great game, and I love it, and fittingly, it's my number three. Number two, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is a cooperative, campaign-driven dungeon crawler where you and up to three other players will venture across the land and delve into dark dungeons, caves, and monster-infested ruins, all for fortune and glory. By now, everybody and their mother knows about Gloomhaven, so there isn't anything new to say about the game. But in a nutshell, here's why I like it. First of all, the sheer amount of content. Seriously, me and my wife have played this over 60 times now, and we're still not done. And on top of that, the designer, Isaac Childress, keeps releasing mini campaigns online for free. So honestly, the amount of content you're getting for your buck is pretty phenomenal. And who doesn't like opening all these little boxes and envelopes? I mean, that kind of stuff just makes me feel like a kid. I also love building up my character, making him better, and then eventually retiring him, to then get to play with a brand new character that has their own cards and their own unique playstyle. My experience with the game is constantly renewed, and I really appreciate that. I also like that combat in this game isn't just based on luck. You really have to plan things out, and every time I have to choose which cards to play, it always feels like an important decision. And when you get to those last rounds, man, things get really tight. I also like that even though this is a huge game with a lot of moving parts and a lot to keep track of, when you really get down to it, the game really isn't that complicated. The basic mechanisms just flow nicely and they all feel right. I really love Gloomhaven, and I can see myself playing it down the line for many years to come, and I cannot wait to see what Isaac has in store for us in the future. Number 1. Cosmic Encounter Cosmic Encounter is a card-driven, combat-bluffing and negotiation game 
where three to five players will use their alien abilities to fight it out in the cosmos, in order to be the first to colonize five planets. The basic flow of the game is pretty simple. Every round you go out and pick a fight with a player. Then you and the defending player both play a combat card face down. And then you reveal them. Whoever's got the highest total wins the fight. Simple enough. But it doesn't end there, because every player has their own alien race. And each race has their own very special power that pretty much breaks the rules of the game. Now all of these powers are extremely different and they all do wacky things that range from seemingly useless to extremely overpowered. And the game comes with 50 of them. So the combinations and interactions between these races are endless. Okay, so why is Cosmic Encounter my number one? Well, first of all, it's a hilarious game. Every time we play it, somebody will make a move that just makes the table explode in laughter. Whether it's using your precious 40 strength attack card to defend a useless colony, or playing an attack card after you swore you were gonna play a negotiate card, basically screwing someone out of a deal that you promised was gonna happen. These moves are truly hilarious and they happen all the time. The second thing I love is that no two game sessions will ever be the same. For real. The sheer amount of alien races, combined with the randomness of all the cards, it basically guarantees a different gaming experience every time we play. Finally, I have to say that Cosmic Encounter isn't for everyone. I have people in my group who do not care for it at all. Because the game is random, and swingy, and messy, and chaotic. But you know what? That's the whole point of it. And if you're in the right mood for that, it can be a blast. And that's why I love it, and that's why it's my number one, Cosmic Encounter. All right, so there you have it. That was my top 10 games of all time. Honestly, those last two or three games could be interchangeable. If you ask me in a month or two, you know, that list will probably change a little bit. Bottom line, they are all awesome games. And on that subject, I want to mention one game that didn't make the list, and that is Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Um, reason for that is we're not playing it anymore. We have finished the campaign, so, you know, the box, the game is gone. We're not playing it, so I didn't see... I didn't think it was a good idea to actually put it on the list. But if we were still playing it, it would probably be number one. It's that good. So if, if you were on the fence about that, honestly, go out, get it. If you don't like it, um, you know, blame me. But I guarantee it, it's, it's very, very good. Um, you might have also noticed on the list, I do not have a lot of new-ish games, right? I think the most recent one is uh, Clank and Gloomhaven. That's 2017. And the reason for that is, I keep my games for a long time, and when I buy a game, I do a lot of research, I watch a lot of videos, I read a lot of reviews, I want to make sure that the game that I buy becomes a classic at my house, at least. You know, I want to make sure I have someone to play it with, someone who will love it, not just buying something to buy something. I don't really subscribe to that. So that's all I wanted to say about that. And uh, yeah, that's it, my top 10 games of all time. So let me know in the comments what your top 10 games are, I'd be curious to read that. And uh, with that being said, have a happy holiday season. Stay safe, have fun, play a lot of games, and I will see you on the next one. And if you want some more videos, YouTube thinks you might like the one on the left. I personally think you might enjoy the one on the right. And if you want to make sure to never miss any of my videos, I would ask you to click the middle button here to, of course, subscribe. The Battle of the Toys, when Martian kids and Earth kids join Santa to battle the bad guys of Mars.